what's up my people welcome back to the channel leave a like on this video and also subscribe to the channel click the top bell icon to get notified when anything new is on the channel if you're on the phone and you watch the premiere and you don't have the option for like the video click on the x on the right hand side and you're gonna get the option for like the video right so as usual people may have some things i'm gonna share with you guys so the first thing i'm gonna give you an update upon the youth them will help carry the youth to the doctor after him get beat up by the grade 11 student right bb coke students ill for a rushing injured friend to doctor following clark's incident bb coke ice ice student dujan garden gary bartley and Kari green were applauded at the saint elizabeth bs institution devotion on monday for rushing their friend to see the doctor after he was allegedly beaten for stepping on his schoolmates clark's shoe another student dujan powell was not at school on monday the boys are being ill far and wide for rescuing and moving on foot jaim coleman 14 after he was beaten unconscious allegedly by a grade 11 student for stepping on a shoe the grade 11 student allegedly assaulted the grade 8 student by punching and beating him on his hands and face. His aunt Tamika Olness said she was hurt by the security guard's alleged failure to report the incident to the school's administration. Meanwhile, Coleman's mother, Chantel Goldburn, told our news team on Saturday that following field efforts to get a brain scan done at the Mandeville Regional Hospital, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton informed her that arrangements have been made to transfer her son to the University Hospital of the West Indies. Seeing so people, them are big up the youth them for them do. You understand? And like any good friend would have done. You see me? Because if you see your friend hurt, you go help your friend. You understand? But me feel a way how more students never rally around them and help them carry the youth. Because they must struggle with the youth still, you know. They must struggle. Me see a video and them hardly could have make it with the youth in a them hand. You understand? So, we just have to big up them youth, yeah. You know what I mean? For them do. So moving on to the next, you know, people, a female was arrested for trying to smuggle the high-grade weed going to her prison, right? Woman charged for trying to smuggle ganja into Black River Police Station. Cha -cha. A St. Elizabeth woman is to face court on Wednesday, October 4, after she was allegedly caught trying to smuggle ganja into the Black River Police Station on Saturday, September 30. 30 year old Shereen Barrett, a farmer of Mountainside St. Elizabeth, is charged with possession and dealing in ganja. Reports are that Barrett went to the a police station to visit a prisoner carrying several bags of chips and other food items. Check were made and eight one stick of G A N G A, the high grade, right? Were found disguised in the products. She was taken into custody and charged. Charger. So this woman I try carrying high grade for whoever she are bring it to and end up get lock up like him so none can help the other right now two of them stranded you see me i say think of the consequences of your actions you see me so we are gonna move on people so this is an update on the um the love triangle um can in we go on my people and that's what me are in mix up so till people he mix up he mix up he mix up some one get some of the information when we gather from yesterday and see if me can you know what i mean see if me can share more with you guys because me see some things about the three persons were involved in the relationship. So I'm going to share the article here. And then I'm going to find the little 
You know what I mean? Extra thing and share with you. See? So, car touch amid St. Elizabeth Love Triangle, K-I-L-L-I-N-G. See? So, a vehicle, a underfit people, them set it afire. You see what I say? Because of the canning. So, I guess the underfit are for the man who do the canning. A underfit motor car was touched on Sunday night at a house in Fagan Town, burnt, um, burnt ground in St. Elizabeth, following the KILLING of a licensed man in what is being theorized as a love triangle. Reports reaching our news team are that the car belonged to Arlanda Blake girlfriend. Black is the man who was G U N. Sorry, Blake is the man that was G U N down early Sunday morning. A police report said about 2.15 a.m. Sunday, Blake 35 visited an address at Fagan Town while there he was SHOT multiple times and taken to hospital. So the same people them were calling him up, carry him to hospital. Right? Church your boy, may I tell you. People, may I tell you, said that something I mix up in a man. Because the man we calling him up, have a wife you know plus him have a youth with the woman where him can up the man over seen and he look like say him get the youth with the woman and this man yeah take over and start deal with the woman right and him a knock it on the side see him way and confirm reports suggest that blake went to visit his girlfriend's house when he was shot allegedly by a license firearm holder the wrecker that went for the burnt vehicle had to be escorted by police from the scene. People are angry, a source told our news team in relation to Blake's D E A T H. So, are the three persons involved in a wagwan? The man, the first man, when we show him, are the man we do the can, in the second, are the man we drop out. And this are the woman where um them in the love triangle with. You see me I say? So somebody say, let me see if I can read the article of phone. See? Alright. So it say uh, the reports are that Blake's common law wife and her lover were in bed when they were when they heard noise coming from the grill. The man now alerted reportedly went for his license machine. He then fired several SHOT at Blake. The lovers then rushed the injured Blake to the hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries. See? So, the man in the white, he have a wife, you know, an ex police sergeant, I'm wife. He get a youth with the woman when we just show no. See? But it looked like, say, them not really in a relationship. She was the side piece where him get a youth with and him have him wife. So he must stick to him wife. But he must deal with her, see him way up on the side. And she have a man, which is the man who drop out. So the two of them are do them thing and them have them right out, woman and man. See? And this man, I mean, I know if I jealous, him jealous. Or him never know, say, the woman of a next man and draft him machine and can up the man. You see me I say? The woman good as a date the next man there and not tell that them boy me at people. You know be careful out there when you know a date woman and man. You see me I say? Especially if you are going to link a woman, be careful, virgin. Because you have some man out there jealous and them we dirty for them woman. So people, me I go move to this article I will miss it. About this money, I want to sip on the screen, right? I him in the middle. Him, um, I think him niece, they over upon the um, left hand side, and him brother over upon the right hand side. Seeing him do 50 years behind bar without being charged, so him just died jail without no charge, no court date, nothing at all for 50 years. Seeing. And the government offer him six million dollar. You know what I mean? For the time where him spend behind bars. Me don't know who I go accept this. 
You see me? But if I me, them can give me six million dollar bedroom. That ain't no money. The man can't even buy a house with that. By the time he turn around, the money done. And more I want know what him family them did there. When he might do this 50 years behind bars. When him family them did there. They never did a check up on him nor nothing. Me agree, say, a back in the days, way back in the days, this at me, you know. So, maybe the family them try all them can and just get fed up and left him behind bars. You know how much thing change since that the man they got jail? You know how much thing change? Cell phone come in. That I want big, big change. Internet come in. That I want next big, big change. I we make. That I want next big, big changes. You know how much changes make people? You know how much changes? This man don't recognize nothing at all when him come out of prison. At least him diva in him right, man. To all me see him look. And you go tell me for 50 years, you go give him 6 million dollars? No, no, that can't, that can't go on. Me see somebody commenting at the comment section and say you at least need to give this man one million dollar for every year when him spend behind bars. You understand? Because you know, you know, convict him, you know, you know, charge him for nothing. And you have him behind bars for so much years, even him niece born and the niece no know him. 50 years the man in a lock up for people. Just look at it. 50 years. Seen? And you go give him six million dollars? No, that's not right. Them need to chump up some more money. You see me? Big woman thing. So I go move on, people. And two women get can at the NSWMA facility on Spanish Town Road them say. Seen? Operations at the National Solid Waste Management Authority on Spanish Town Road are temporarily delayed after two women were SHOT and KILL at the facility on Monday morning. Reports are that the incident occurred sometime around 5 a.m. Their identities have not yet been revealed. Consequently, our operation at the facility are temporarily... <coughs> delayed this will inconvenience our customers and we sincerely apologize for any disruption to our service our top priority is to ensure the safety and security of everyone involved and we will continue to work closely with the police to assist in their efforts in this most unfortunate incident nswma said in a release the police are currently on the scene and processing the area so I go go now update on that you know people right all right up the update is mother daughter reported victims in nswma s-h-o-o-t-i-n-g so it's a mother and daughter them take out people for me no no a mother and her daughter are said to be the two women who were GUN down at the National Solid Waste Management Authority on Spanish Town Road, St. Andrew, uh, Monday morning. Police said one of the deceased woman is believed to be Sophia Jomans, a resident of Manly Meadows close in Kingston. Her daughter's identity has not yet been revealed. Reports are that the ladies regularly sold breakfast at the mentioned location from a vehicle in which one of the bodies were found, the police said. Preliminary reports indicate that around 5.11 a.m., the women were preparing for the day's sale when they were pounced up on by armed men who opened G-U-N, fire, K-I-L-L-I-N-G, them on the spot. Lamen said they received a notification from the police control that two women were seen lying along Spanish Town with must be Spanish Town Road they mean with what appeared to be G U N S H O T wounds on arrival a female believed to be in her late sixties clad in a white t shirt, black skirt and yellow crocs slippers was found lying on the ground behind a white Toyota wish. Upon further checks, the other female was found inside the Toyota Wish 
uh, that body was clad in white t-shirt black shorts and black croc slippers uh, up to a short while ago police were still at the scene Jaja R.I.P. to this mother and daughter you know what I mean condolences to their family this is sad this is sad you know what I mean two hustlers wake up to make them daily bread and you just take them three points like that Jano. so people leave your comments in the comment section and let me know what you guys think so we are gonna move on people and a couple was k-i-l-l in makuk's pen seen are upon the main road two s-h-o-t and them drop out on makuk's pen main road jaja traffic was snarled for miles along the makuk's pen main road in saint catherine where the bad days of a man and a woman were found with G-U-N-S-H-O-T wounds. Traffic was diverted into the eastbound lane to accommodate the forensic work by a criminal investigator. We can confirm that there are, are there was a double M-U-R-D-E-R involving a man and a woman, but we don't have their identities as yet. As Police investigators are still processing the scene. A representative of the Jamaica Constabulary Force Corporate Communication Unit told our news team. Preliminary reports are that residents reported hearing explosion about 3.30 a.m. The bar days of the deceased were reportedly later discovered about 7 a.m. in the area's bushy terrain more details soon so people as soon as me get more me share it with you guys but it's alleged that these two persons are eaglers see them sell them sell at the carnation market you see me i say so r.i.p to these two person you see me i say and condolences to their family you understand me jaja so them say a boyfriend and you know what I mean them a couple and the two of them get caught up and drop out so people moving right along a female that we're going to see on the screen she get caught up and drop out in a downtown scene daughter of PMP counselor aspirant M-U-R-D-E-R-E-D -E -E in downtown Kingston the police say a suspect is in custody following the S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G drop out of a 31-year-old Anik Walters, the daughter of People's National Party, prospective councillor candidate for the Admiral Town Division, Louise when in Pumbles, Newland. Both Walters, a security supervisor of a Benbow Street Kingston address, and a man she was with were S H O T at about 10:45 Sunday night the man remain um the man remains in hospital head of the Kingston Central Police Division superintendent Beresford Williams said it was too early to establish a clear motive for the KILLING and it was also difficult to decipher whether or not the man in custody was involved the person was taken into custody following information arising from the description of the vehicle said to have been involved in the SHOOTING he was reportedly seen in that vehicle driving in a manner that would arouse the suspicion of the police in Kingston East, he told our news team. Williams said preliminary reports suggest that the SHOOTING may be gang related. He pointed to a feud involving the upsetter and the superstar gang's base in the area. According to reports, Walters and an unidentified male companion drove up in a black motor car on Orange Street in the vicinity of Orange Villa. When they were pounced upon by armed men who fired at them hitting Walters in the upper part of her body. The male was SHOT in his leg. Jano r.i.p to this girl yeah you know what i mean and condolences to her family you see them gang warrior people 
them just poor I may tell you. Some of the time, them man yeah, them now nah war for nothing substantial in you know, people. I just want to look a mistake or want to look a misunderstanding and it just turn into something big because people keep on a drop out, a drop out, a drop out. You know what I mean? So nobody now want to stop you know, reach to a point where there's no turning back. You know what I mean? And some of the time, innocent people get caught up in a them thing. Yeah. So RIP again to this girl yeah, and condolences to her family. People, subscribe to the channel and click the like button. You know what I mean? Please and thanks. So we are going to move on to the next people. The 15-year-old student will beat up the 14-year-old 14, 14, yeah, 14 student at the B.B. Coke High School. Them grant him bail this morning when him go court. First, me did think, say, boy, them just go give him station bail where them go use maybe ID or light bill and them something there. But, ah, uh, lock them, lock him down a jailhouse. And him have to see a judge before he get bail. So it look like them are going to make an example all the time. But more of them go easy with him still. You know what I mean? Me say it's a mistake. Maybe mistake is a light word. So more that replace mistake with him make a bad choice. He make a bad decision. You see me? I say everybody make mistakes. So me don't want to know. You kill him for just a mistake. A, no mistake. A bad decision or a bad choice for him make. Yes, so me I say me know say my look back at it and him learn a lesson from that. Right? So 15 year old accused of beating BB Coke student granted three hundred thousand dollars bail. The 15 year old boy accused of last Thursday beating and assault of a younger student at the BB Coke High School in St. Elizabeth was on Monday offered bail. The grade 11 student attorney, Hopton Marshall, said the school boy was offered bail in the sum of $300,000 when he appeared before the presiding judge, Dione Lawrence Pivot, at the Black River Courthouse. That bail application was successful at the moment. We are expecting his parent to take up the bail that was granted to him, said Marshall. Meanwhile, the attorney has refuted claims that his client wasn't wearing clerk shoes when the incident happened last Thursday. The attorney explained that the schoolboy is expected to return to court on Wednesday. Hopefully by then all documents that are required will be brought in and he will be on bail, he said. A stop order has been placed on the schoolboy's sorry and the schoolboy at all ports the attorney said the boy's mother has expressed remorse they are so empathetic and i express that in court it is a very unfortunate situation and they sympathize with the complainant and his family the lawyer said the attorney said that the boy doesn't have a history of aggression the teen has been charged for assault occasioning grievous bodily harm in relation to the brutal beating of Jaim Coleman, 14. Several relatives of the accused boy turned up at the courthouse. So people, me no want to no condemn him for this a look. It's for this a thing you want do, not look. For this way him do. Everybody deserve a second chance. You know what I mean? So we are going to move, go over in a Manchester people. Remember the robbery go on at the Scotia Bank and five people get can. So one of them drop out people. John o Star. So I'm sure what go on with you guys. See? Manchester arm robbery, G-U-N-S-H-O-T victim, D-I-E-S. You know what I mean? Him lose him three points. One of five people, S-H-O-T, and injured during a multi-million dollar robbery at Scotia Bank in Mandeville on August 25 as D-I-E-D. -E Police sources told our news team that the man D-I-E-D -E at his home on Monday morning after being released from hospital recently. The 38-year-old father of three was S-H-O-T in the head while reportedly driving near the robbery scene. Why people, you see, wrong place at the wrong time, man. Our news team was told that the man was released from a corporate area hospital and was on a waiting list for a rehab center. The August 25 robbery left five people injured when GUN men attack a beryllium crew making off with millions of dollars. The total amount stolen is yet to be disclosed. So people, the other day I share a story with you guys about one of the person we get can up to one of the person out of the five a female we need a hip replacement surgery 
and them said that I got cost her about I think boy about the amount of three million dollar I think you know what I mean so when me see this me the checks yeah she lose her fight you know come to find out is the next person we get caught in him head and guess what drive the man I drive past the robbery scene you know wrong place at the wrong time you know Jano star boy people leave your comments so we are gonna move on now my people Kingston man charged after man and woman S H O T. A 32 year old man from Kingston was charged with wounding with intent and possession of a prohibited weapon after a woman and a man were S H O T on Wednesday, June 9, 2021. Is Andre Robinson, otherwise called Kimmy, of William Street, Raytown, Kingston 16. Reports from the Elliston Road Criminal Investigation brands are that about 6.20 a.m. a woman was at her gate when she heard several explosions and saw a man running toward her with Robinson pursuing while allegedly firing at the man. She began running and Robinson fired at them, injuring both. Robinson escaped on foot in the area. The police were summoned and upon arrival, the woman was taken to hospital where she was treated and released. Robinson was charged on Sunday and is currently awaiting a court date. Jaja. So, I'm glad the woman, you know what I mean, recover. You see me, them not say nothing about the man where him can after. So, him spread him bed him off lay down in it, deal with the consequences of his action. So we are gonna move over to Clarendon where the police them find a man in a one place named Dona in a alley. You see me I say um the police are seeking the public's assistance in identifying a man whose decomposing body was discovered in Ali Dona district. Reports from the lawmen are that about 6 p.m. residents were alerted by a full order and went to make checks in bushes nearby. They discovered the decomposing body and summoned the police. The scene was processed and the body removed to the morgue. The body is of dark complexion, medium built, about 5 feet 9 inches tall and sports a dreadlocks hairstyle. The body was clad in a black merino, blue pants, and pink shoes. So, anybody with any information can link the police scene. So, the police station is uh, number 876 986 3233 or 119 police emergency number, the nearest police station. So, guys, like and subscribe. Click the bell icon after you subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments. Bless upon yourself.